media <coughs> warning. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how she got here for those of you who don't know. Randy and I joined the Circle of Love in 2007 when Bethel Lutheran Church was reaching out to neighborhood communities to host children from Ukraine. We learned that there was a community center in a small village named Boryaka in Ukraine. Um, it was through the work of the community center that this program was set up. Its purpose was to help children who lived near Chernobyl and were constantly in the shadow of radiation from the nuclear accident that occurred in 1984. The program was a way for these children to get away for six weeks in the summer to somewhere with fresh air and clean water. We joined and took a 10-year-old boy named Bordon Borde that summer. Um, the Holmes took Yulia, and the Bex took a little boy too, and uh, Michelle Wee and Scott Wee. So there were several people in the circle of love. Um, Bordon was a wonderful young man, and we soon fell in love with him and invited him back several summers after that. In 2015, we agreed to take a 12-year-old girl named Sophia Kotenko for the summer. She also stole our hearts, and we invited her back several times. In 2017 and 19, Randy and I were privileged to visit Ukraine, and we stayed with Sophia's parents in their home. She had outgrown the circle of love in 2019 with her high school graduation. She started at the University of Kiev um, in the fall of 2019, majoring in social studies. The Circle of Love was dismantled in 2018 and the program ended. We continued to communicate with our children in Ukraine via the internet. When the war started in 2022, all of us members contacted our children in Ukraine. Eventually, Sophia re uh, requested that Randy and I could apply for a program called You For You to have her come here and live with us. She arrived on October 20th, 2022. And now Sophia. <laughs> Good morning. Most of you know who I am and have heard my story before. Thank you for coming again. For those who don't know me, I am Sofia Kotenko. I am from Ukraine, living with Randy and JC since October 2022. I have shared my story before, and now Pastor Holly asked me to do it again for others who have not heard it. Yesterday marked two years anniversary of the Russian invasion. Before I start, I want to tell you about the screen behind me and the pictures that are on the screen. There are videos and pictures of Ukraine. It starts with a video of my hometown and county Borodyanka before the Russian invasion. See how peaceful and beautiful my home was. After that video, you will see pictures and videos of my home after the invasion. Pictures of the total destruction and death from the invading forces. You will also pic see pictures of Bogdan Borodai, who was killed on February 1st, 2024, fighting for his country in Bakhmut. He is a circle of love child from 2007. He will be in our hearts forever. Lastly, you will see pictures of the rebuilding of Ukraine and in particular Borodyanka. Our European neighbors have all been very generous helping us rebuild from the ashes. Please enjoy the pictures and videos as you listen to my story. Deuteronomy 31.6 states, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave nor forsake you. I lived in a house in Borodyanka with my mom and dad and older brother. My parents both worked and my brother and I attended school there. The community center was a very important building in Borodyanka. Even neighboring towns participated in the help that they provided. The center started after Chernobyl to offer housing and help for people who lost their, lost their homes after the nuclear accident. Many of the people from the evacuated homes came to the community center for help. After Crimea and East states of Ukraine were attacked in 2014, the community center was taking refugees from those parts of my country who were leaving because of the beginning of war, which has continued for 10 years already. The day the full-scale invasion started on February 24, 2022, was the day that I will never forget. I was a student at Kyiv University at that time. We were studying online because of the virus. 
My mother called me to tell that my brother was coming home. When I asked her why he was returning home, she told me to turn on the news. That the Russian has started the, to bomb the whole <coughs> our country. The first attack was to Kyiv airport. We didn't want to believe that it was really happening. Bucha and Irpin, neighboring towns close to Kyiv, were occupied first. We could hear the bombing going on these towns. The Russians came from Belarus to attack Kyiv Oblast. We weren't prepared at that time, and no one stopped them. We all believed that it would end in a day or so. My parents went to work the next day because we were safe at that time, still thinking it would not last long. The Russians were stopping Bucha and Irpin from advancing to Kyiv. The people started to resist the Russian troops. Then the Russians began looking for another way to Kyiv, as that was their target. The Russians came to my town on February 26. There were long columns of tanks driving down the streets through the town. They were focused on inviting Kyiv and only shot at people in their way at first. At that time, me and my family were with my father's mom in our house. We saw the tanks with our own eyes. My father told us to be calm and sit down, but my grandma, she's a very curious person, and looked out the window to see what was going on. The Russians saw her and started to shoot at our house. The bullets went through the fence and stuck in the water well. The second shot broke the window of the house and stuck in the wall and broke out one of our paintings. We were all very frightened and fell down to the floor. We believed that sooner or later the tanks and soldiers would leave my town, Varadyanka. We didn't think that we would have to leave. We weren't all at all prepared to leave our home. The people in Borodyanka started to fight the columns of troops. The Russians then became very angry and started bombing all of Borodyanka. Huge bombs were dropped in apartment buildings. People were hiding in the basements of the apartments to protect themselves. The people were directed by the Ukrainian government to hide in the basements, as this was the safest place to be. All of the infrastructure, school, offices, fire departments, police departments, social services, gas station, grocery stores, all public buildings and the community center were all burned. This day will be forever in my mind. It was the loudest sound I have heard in my life. There was black smoke outside my window from all of the build buildings burning. I thought it would be the last day of my life, so I took my phone and I was thinking who to write my last messages to. To my friends abroad, to my friends in Deerfield, and all of the other people who I loved and cared about. I was so worried and frightened that I couldn't stop crying. My mother tried to calm me down, but she was also very upset, so she was no help. We were both in a state of shock and anxiety. After my reaction, my family decided that it was time to leave. We spent our last night in our house, all staying on the first floor for safety. Early next morning, we packed all the things that we thought were the most important and few clothes, and we left behind many other things. The worst, the worst thing we left was our family dog, because we had no room to put her in our car. I still feel bad about leaving the dog, but she did survive and she's still alive. We gave our chickens to our neighbors and left everything else behind. We headed to another state or oblast, to my grandma's house in a very cool village that would normally be three hours away, but it took us 10 hours to get there because of the Russian blocking all the main roads. We had to take roads through the forest to get there. There were blockades every 15 minutes, Ukrainian soldiers wanting to check our documents and looking for Russians. We saw many tragic things along the way, destroyed homes and dead people. We prayed the whole way not to meet any Russians because they would kill anyone they saw for no reason. 
After a long trip, we finally got to Grandma's house. We all felt a little bit safer because we were far from the barrel. It was very quiet and peaceful there, but it was a primitive cabin. The first thing we did was to go to grocery store and shop for food. Thanks God we had money. The stores in Borodanko had no food in them. When the war started, people bought everything off the shelves. We were glad that there was food in the grocery store by my grandma's house. People looked at us like we were crazy. We had two carts, shopping carts full of food. We told them that we were from Borodanka and there was no food there. We spent two weeks living there in poor conditions. No water, no bathroom, no internet. I had to walk to a hill to contact Jesse and my other friends to let them know that I was okay. During that time, all of Borodanka and all neighboring villages were occupied by the Russians. The villages were closed to any movement. After two weeks, the university decided to continue school over the internet. My mom, who works at the treasury, was also told to return to work. So we needed good internet to do this, which was not possible in our little cabin. And we started to look for somewhere else to live. My mother contacted her friends and they helped her find an apartment in the south side of the Kiev Oblast. It was one and one and a half hours from my grandma's house. We had good internet there. I continued my classes online. My mom was able to return to work. It was close enough for her to walk to work. The apartment was only two rooms. My brother slept on the floor, I slept on the couch, and my parents had the bedroom. Once every two to three days, we would contact our neighbors and ask about our house and how our dog was. They had promised to feed it while we were gone. At first, we could contact them, but then we lost the connections because all of the occupied cities had no electricity, no water, and no internet. We didn't know how anything was. It was at the time that I learned about you for you I contacted Jesse and Randy and asked them to look into this program for me to come to live with them. Jesse started to fill out the paperwork. It was complicated and took her four months or even maybe longer to complete it. You know, all know Jesse, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Borodanka and other villages were liberated from occupation on April 1st. The Russians left. All of these towns were occupied for one month. During this time, the Russians would not allow any of people in Borodanka to rescue any of the people left in the basement of the destroyed apartment buildings. Close to 1,000 innocent people died a horrible death in a cold basement without food, water, or light. At the start of the invasion, there were 15,000 people living in Borodanka. At that time, there were only a few thousand people left in my hometown. After we found out that our city was free, my parents wanted to check the situation out. My parents and my uncle and his wife decided to drive together to check out the status of our home and the neighbors and the village. This was also another dangerous drive because the Russians had mined most of the roads, so they had to be careful not to, to hit a mine. My parents found out that some Russian troops had lived in our home and stolen some of our things. The neighbors told them that the day after we left, Russian tanks moved into our neighborhood and completely surrounded our house for the months that they were there. My grandpa's house was close to ours. A tank parked on his front yard and aimed its guns to in, at my grandpa's house. They stole our laptop, dad's guns, dad's watch, but overall the house was sound. It was very dirty, mom and dad had much cleaning to do, but it was not destroyed. They decided that dad would stay in the house to protect it. Mom returned it to the apartment. We lived in an apartment with our dad for about two weeks. Then we packed up all of our stuff and returned home. In the beginning, we had no electricity. By the end of April, we had electricity and soon after, internet.
My dad took me to see the center of my native town to see what had happened. All the buildings were broken, burned, and black. It was like a bad dream. I couldn't believe what I was seeing with my own eyes. Nobody was repairing any of it. When I talk about it, my heart broke more. This is the city where I was born, where I grew up. It was my home. When I was little, I would dream that I would live in a big city like New York so everyone would know about my city. Now everyone knows about my city, but we have paid a high price for it to become known. New grocery stores have been built. They are rebuilding the schools and the banks, and they have built small modular houses for people who lived in apartments, but they have done nothing with the apartment buildings. They stood like a large dark shadow over our town for almost two years. Modular houses were, were built to house many of the government jobs. All of our documentation was destroyed. My mom was lucky because the treasury was still standing where she worked. The community center was burned by the Russians. The area has been cleaned up and now they are building a new community center. Other countries are helping with building this new community center. When it will be done, it will be the first and the biggest rehabilitation center for the soldiers returning from war in Ukraine. It is planned to help the soldiers and their families continue their lives. They plan to help them find jobs and offer counseling. After waiting all of summer and for news about you for you finally I received notification that I was given permission to come to the U.S. Just to send money from the Circle of Love at St. Paul's Liberty Lutheran Church for plane ticket. Thank you all for that. And my trip started on October 19th. I took the bus from Kiev to Poland for a 16-hour drive, right, without a bathroom. <laughs> I had to find a taxi from the bus depot to the airport with my two suitcases my backpack and a sack of food that my mother insisted I take along. She was so worried that I would starve. <laughs> I waited in the airport in Poland for 12 hours for my plane. I finally got on a plane for a 10-hour flight to Chicago. I thought my trip was done when I landed in Chicago, but I was wrong. I had to go through security in Chicago and wait for four hours to be checked off, so I could finally leave. Then I finally found Randy and Jesse. It was so hard. I don't know what they were doing in the airport, probably looking for somebody else, but not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so it took me another good 30 minutes to find them. And then they drove the three hours home to our house. To say I was exhausted is nothing. I was beyond exhausted, but somehow I kept going. I have celebrated my one year anniversary on October 20th. That year has gone very fast for me. At first, I had more paperwork to fill out so I could get a job. I continued my studies with the University of Kyiv. I took classes during the night online. There is an eight hour time difference between US and Ukraine. 
I finally graduated with honors with a bachelor's degree in social studies in June 2023. I had to meet with people from Dane County to get a work permit and a social security card so I can pay taxes. <laughs> and I started working February 15th for the Comfort Suites in Cottage Grove at the front desk. I worked the PM shifts there. I now have my driver's license thanks to my American family. When I came to U.S., the first thing that impressed me was the cost of everything here. It is so much more than in Ukraine. The second thing that shocked me, of course, was the taxes. <laughs> I never paid attention to taxes at home. That has been a real learning experience for me. But one of the fun things that I've learned is playing cribbage with Randy and our family. I'm so good that even scanned him a couple of times. Can you believe it? <laughs> Randy says, when you're good, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I have shared many of my Ukrainian traditions with my American family and friends. I also cook many Ukrainian foods for others to taste. You will have a Ukrainian treat after church during our coffee hour. So don't miss this chance to try it. This last January 2023, we celebrated a true Ukrainian Christmas meal with another family that had a Ukrainian girl living with them. Jesse and I cooked and baked all week the 12 traditional dishes for the Ukrainian Christmas. We also made a Ukrainian Easter food. We made special Easter bread and colored eggs with traditional colors from onion peels and other natural coloring. I put the food in a basket and Pastor Holly blessed it for us, like we used to do in Ukraine in our Easter. So today we remember the start of the war on February 24, 2022. This marks the two-year anniversary of the war. The war continues. Bombs fall in Ukraine daily. Homes and lives, lives of innocent people are destroyed every day. Here in the USA, there is no war. It is easy to forget the horrible things that are happening in my homeland. I am here to ask you not to forget, to remember us and support our efforts in whatever way you can. The two years have gone very fast. Ukraine is slowly rebuilding my city of Borodyanka. People have moved back home the population is now over 10,000. Borodanka is officially a city hero. The burned apartment buildings have been taken down. They have been a symbol of the heart of our city. Everyone knew about them. Now that heart has been removed and there is nothing in its place. However, there have been some wonderful rebuilds a brand new community center that will be a center of rehabilitation for soldiers and families. New schools, administrative buildings, new social services. There is still much building to be done. Our European neighbors have donated money for this rebuild. Lithuania has donated the money and people to rebuild our school. Other countries have donated to rebuild the community center and other buildings. At the two-year anniversary, we have also lost many lives to the war. Bogdan Borodai is one of the many. <clears throat> For me, my future is still unknown. My stay, stay is limited. I came here for two years with a program called u for You. I am not allowed to leave the country of USA with this program. Now I have applied for another program that is called Temporary Protective Status. It will allow me to stay until April of 2025. This TPS also allows me to visit my home. I have not seen my family since, since October 2022. 
it is very difficult to live when you know that the war in your country still exists. People there don't make any plans because they don't know if they will be alive tomorrow. At the end of their day, they're just happy that they made it through the day. They are living a new, normal living in a war zone. I know that here I'm pretty safe, but one part of me and my heart will always be home, no matter how many years I will spend here. My parents still live in my home, in my town, Borodyanka, in our house. My mom can't visit me because of her job with the treasury, which will not allow her to travel outside the country. We miss each other very much. We hope that there will be a day that we can plan for us to reunite. For now, I'm so happy to be here. I'm thankful to everyone, especially my American family, for taking me, helping, and supporting me with every challenge that comes my way. Thank you to my colleagues at work. Thank you to you, my church family. I'm so proud to call you my second family, and this is my second home. Every Sunday when I see you at church, you hug me and make me feel loved and safe. You are concerned about my well-being and interested in my life. This means a lot to me, and I appreciate all of this support. There are so many people that I want to say thank you to, but it would take me another hour to name everyone. So I just want you to know how thankful I am to every one of you for all that you have done for me and what you are continuing to do for me. Until the time when I know if I have to leave or I can stay, I will continue living and enjoying every day and each new challenge that ever comes my way. I trust that the Lord will guide me and you to show us the way. Corinthians 4, verse 8, 9 states, We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Therefore, we do not lose heart. So, outwardly, we are wasting away, yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. After church, please enjoy some of my Ukrainian cookies. Thank you for coming today to hear my story. If any of you want to make a donation for our Circle of Love families, please place the donation in one of the yellow envelopes available with your bulletin today. You can designate the money to the Circle of Love or to Bogdan's Memorial. Thank you all again. May God bless you. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you. Uh, I invite you to rise and